Amberjack Showdown, bellies, collars, high-low medallions, and cheeks. Let's get cooking. What's up, y'all? I'm Reed the Fishmonger, and today I'm here with a very special guest, my buddy, executive chef from multiple different notable restaurants in our area, Chef Omar. We just broke down an epic Crater Amberjack. You can check that video out right here. We've got Amberjack bellies, cheeks, hyaline medallions, and collars. Beautiful. Amberjack, one of Florida's most underrated fish. People talk about it being a throwback fish. I'm here to tell you, Omar, a badass chef, is here to tell you, this is top shelf fish right here. How bright red that bloodline is, is how you know not only was it fresh, but how well it was taken care of. Nice I'm excited time. to try these out. All right, guys, so getting the pans nice and hot. I got a nice medium on this range right over here. What I'm gonna be using is some uh, little bit of pork fat. I like pork fat just for its high burning point. It's gonna give these guys a great sear and a great crust. Use a little sea salt here and some cracked black pepper. And on these steakier fish, you guys, do not be afraid of generous salt and pepper. The more seasoning, the better, because remember, that's all going to come out once you start cooking. Let's get this belly right down there. Amberjack belly in a cast iron pan is money, dude. Let's get these high collars in there. Press down. Give that a nice sear on one side. Once I flip it over, I'll begin to baste it in the same fat that we're cooking it in. We got Amberjack high loin medallions going on. We've got Amberjack belly going on. Omar is about to hit my favorite cut. Collars. The most important thing when you're cooking is heat control. Right now we're doing a, a nice hard sear because you want to lock in, we want to seal in those juices. We don't want to cook it all the way through on one side. Just get that nice hot sear, flip it, that nice golden color, that nice crispy texture, and then we're going to baste it. So you got to gauge it. That's why I say, I like to start medium, medium high, not too high to where nothing burns to where you can't control it. Especially if you're cooking over multiple eyes like this. In this case, depending on what the cut is, like some of these steakier guys right here, we're gonna cook off with a nice medium high heat. Right over here, I'm just gonna kind of render this out a little bit and then I'm gonna raise the temperature on the belly. The belly's like a little bit, a little bit uh, fattier than all these other cuts here. And with cast iron, once they get too hot, there's yeah. really no going back, right? Once they get too hot, you can always just move it off. Just take a look at, take a look at your oil, look at, look, look at the fat. Once it begins smoking and you start to smell it burn, just take it right off the heat and just let that sit. All right, so you can see right over here, see where it starts to brown right along the bottom there. Go ahead and give that a, give that a check to see where we're at. Nice, beautiful sear. This guy needs a little bit more time on that side. One of the most important things when cooking fish is to don't touch it. Let it sit in the same spot the entire time. That way it develops a nice crust. If you're peeking at it like we're doing right now, you're never going to get the browning you want before the fish is fully cooked. Cast iron pan, a little bit different of a ball game. You do have the ability to peek at it. My preference is still gonna be to try to leave it in the same spot as long as possible so that way you can really develop that nice crust on it. What are your thoughts on that? The most important thing and the key takeaway is you kind of want to look at the edge of what you're searing. Once you see the edge starts to give that even brown color all the way around, much like this did, you want to flip that one over. This guy's a little bit hotter on this side, this eye, so I want to flip that just to maintain that nice crust, that nice brown so it doesn't burn here. Ooh, flip that, that looks over. good, man. Like I said, we're just going to keep this as simple as possible. So. You flip that over. I'm just going to tilt my pan up just ever so slightly away from me and just base it with the fat. We love that pork fat, baby. These cuts aren't too fatty, so what you want to do is you're just introducing the fat into your cuts here. It's going to be nice and juicy, nice and buttery when you bite into that. And for those of you guys at home, his wrist is getting splattered with oil. Be careful. He is a professional chef, so I don't even know if he feels it anymore, <laughs> but I'd probably be crying. Just be very careful, guys, and take things slow. Don't rush anything when you're doing stuff like this. Gonna check on our other guy right over here. Push that over. Beautiful. 
Take a look at that skin right there. Look how perfect that looks, you guys. I wish you guys would smell this right now. This is fresh fish, y'all, so it does not smell like your ex's house. I'm gonna go ahead and switch pans here. All right, this guy can get a little bit more heat. You guys, be careful. When you're touching these, uh, these cast irons, the entire pan gets hot, even the handle. You always wanna grab it with a towel. Of course, I can use my bare hands. I've lost almost all feeling in them over the years. I don't wanna cook these all the way through. I want to let the residual heat kind of carry it over. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down all the way down to low. Just kind of let that rest in the pan and let it kind of bring up by itself. So they are gonna be cooked all the way through, but you're letting them rest the final internal cook kind of like you would a steak. Yes. Awesome. Looks like these guys are already here, ready to go. I'm just gonna bring that off. Right there, that's about a medium rare. I'm gonna let that rest to a nice medium. Same thing with these guys over here. Take it right off the eye, those guys are ready to go, ready to rest in the pan. You can see around the belly of this amberjack, you've just got pools of fat. That is just pure flavor, absolutely delicious. Fish. I think we're gonna call this one the dessert round right there. Hey. It's gonna come right over here. I got these guys off. Now with these cuts, you can cook them like how you like. I like them more on the medium side. You can make them well done, medium, mid-rare, whatever your preference is. Let's check in our belly here. Oh man, you can tell that crust is gonna be awesome. All right guys, for the reveal, let's check it out. Woo! Dude, that looks awesome. You can see where it gets real crispy right along the edge there. Oh yeah, man, when you flip that over too, that pool of fat that was sitting on top of it yeah. went into the pan and got the oil dancing. Yep. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab that boy, while it's still warm and hot. I'm gonna go ahead and pour just the residual pork fat from our other two cuts right onto this final piece right here. I'm starting to think that I'm team collar, he's team belly. I mean, I'm starting to think he's putting a little bit more extra love into the <laughs> belly. I can feel Omar's competitiveness going on here. You know that belly right there, that's, that's gonna be the showstopper right there. It's looking good, man. It's, it's looking, looking really good. good. I think that's right where I, we need it to be. We're just gonna go ahead and crank that heat right off. On these thinner cuts like that, don't be afraid of cooking it just about all the way through on one side, right? Yeah. On one side, especially the belly. The belly here has a lot of fat all the way throughout. So you can cook that all the way through and it'll still be nice and juicy and moist. Put the heat off now. Go ahead and grab my cast iron. Be careful, guys. Like I said, again, the handle's hot, so a dry towel, hold the handle, and just carefully remove that off the pan. Hold it away from you. Dude, I'm so excited to eat I'm this so with excited. you, Omar. Dude, this looks awesome, heck yeah. And for those of you guys watching, Omar, before he took the belly off the pan, he took his spatula and went all the way around the fish. You wanna make sure that you have your sear fully released before you try pulling it off. Because if you just have it in a corner and you start pulling, and that hasn't been released yet, you might lose that beautiful crust at the bottom of your pan, and that is a crime in just about every country. So right in, when you're butter poaching, we're just gonna add some butter and some pork fat to the small pot here. You wanna fill it up halfway from cold, okay? What's gonna happen is, we're gonna start off with a very low heat and bring this some gently. We're gonna add our cheeks in there and we're just gonna slowly cook this and slowly poach this in that fat, in that butter until it's cooked all the way through. It's gonna break down all the tendons. It's gonna be nice and buttery. It's gonna be pull apart and melt in your mouth. I love that's what you're deciding to do with these cheeks because contrary to popular belief, cheeks are actually lean and they are full of tendons. Yeah. So how you're choosing to cook this, I think is gonna be absolutely perfect. I look forward to trying it. All right, y'all. We got our butter melted down. These beautiful amberjack cheeks are about to hop in there. Omar, why did we not salt and pepper the amberjack cheeks? So I want to save that till the end. I just want to just get just the clear flavor from the butter, from the pork fat into here, and then we're going to season these last. Also too, with the seasoning that's on there, unless you pre-season them and just let it sit for maybe 30 minutes to an hour, all that's just going to come off in the poaching liquid, which is your fat, in which case we're using pork fat. So we're just gonna drop these right in there. Again, I got this on a nice low heat. My butter is starting to froth up a little bit. I'm just gonna drop these guys right in there now and just let that slowly cook. 
Low and slow is the key, guys. Do you ever scrape off the bubbles from your butter? All depends. If I'm making clarified butter, I will. If I'm doing uh, brown butter, I won't. I'll keep that in there nice and brown. In this case, we can just let that go, let that froth up a little bit. We can choose to kind of skim that off the top if we want. I kind of want to keep all that flavor in there. Keep all that fat, all those milk solids in there, and just let that continue to slowly poach and slowly cook. Love it. Yeah, it's crazy how the flavor of butter changes from how you do it. Yeah. Like when I'm uh, making lobster tails, I'll actually skim off half of the bubbles. Yeah. Because I don't want all of it in there, but I also want some of it in there. Some of it and just gives like, like a nice nutty flavor. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, and if you take all of it off, you lose out on some of that. If it's all of it in there, it's a little too much. And it's every cooking method, you can get as, you know, into it as you want to. It's part of why I love cooking with professional chefs. You guys always inspire me because I only have, you know, my limited home cooking experience. Yeah. And I love getting to learn from people that do this on a daily basis. Omar's got this simmering butter going and butter burns quickly. So watch your butter, you guys. You really want to make sure that you're not browning your butter when you're poaching it. You want it just in a, a light simmer. Omar's been keeping it in a low temp the whole time. You've got those little bubbles, not roaring bubbles. For those of you at home, this is your first time cooking fish. How you know when a fish is done and cooked all the way through, at least to your liking, you can stick a thermometer or a probe in there to the center, to the thickest most part of the meat. It should read 140. That's how you know it's cooked all the way through. Or if you don't have a thermometer and you're just a, a fishmonger like me, I take a thin sharp knife like a paring knife or a fillet knife and I poke it at the thickest point. If it slides in and out without any resistance, it's done. Any resistance at all, it's not done yet, just like testing a baked potato. Yeah. All right guys, so these are ready to go. Now that they're out, just season them gently. I can't wait to dig in. We good to yeah, go? We're good to go. All right, dude, let's do this. All right, y'all, the moment that we've been waiting yes. for, we get to finally eat this. Amberjack Showdown. These are the collars. These are the Hyloin medallions, the cheeks, and Omar's favorite. The belly. You know? And since that's the piece that you're the most excited for, yeah. we're gonna save that for dessert. Slide that out of here. And, all right, which piece should we try first? What do you think? Let's thinking? see here. Let's go right into uh, the medallions. Laura, you got it, man. Awesome. I'll take that one. Yeah. Take that one. Which part are we gonna go for? The, the bottom of it the first, bottom. and then we'll go to the eye second. We're gonna leave the skin on that bite. Oh yeah. I've eaten Amberjack my entire life. I've cooked it just like this a thousand times. I've never done the skin. So this is actually a first for me. I'm excited to try it. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Good. That skin, it's crispy, it's rich, it's buttery. That amberjack flavor, it's, mm, it's really good, it's fresh. Good. Mm. Yeah, it's. And then that, like, kind of, when you cut them into medallions like that, have almost like, and doing a pork fat, a pork chop feel mm. to it. Yeah, it does, actually. I was just gonna say. Almost has like a shellfish taste to it. Right? Is that from the eat? What they that, eat, right? That, that is from their diet, yes, sir. Wow, wow, so good, so good. Love that. Let's, so. That piece right there and this piece right here are gonna eat a little bit different. That one's gonna have more sinew in it. This one's gonna be the eye. It's gonna have bigger flakes and a little bit more fat. Let's go for that eye. Just, Cheers, holy cheers. smokes, dude. You're, you're that is. jumping in with that bite. Mm. Wow. I'll tell you what, guys. Chef Omar got a perfect cook on this fish. So good. So flaky. Look so at that. light. Zero opaqueness, but it is fully wet and juicy. That is the definition of perfection when it comes to cooking fish. All right, Omar, we got. Cheeks and collars, what's next? You know what, let's go right into the collars. Right into the collars. Yeah. Uh, we're, you guys, we're going for my favorite part of the entire Amberjack. Amberjack collars, not only my favorite part of the Amberjack, this is one of my favorite cuts of fish, period. So let's 
dig Let's right dig in. Right in. Oh yeah, cheers. Cheers on that. That looks so good. Mmm. Boom. Well, well. Right? It's buttery. It's rich. Mmm. Isn't that almost like you're Super eating Super tender. Isn't yeah. that almost like you're eating a completely different fish? It is, it is. See, the flavor profiles in these is like almost completely different. Which is wild. Like, yeah. it's just like, they're not even that far away from each yeah. other on the fish. It's crazy, man. Something for you guys to know at home. Amberjack is in the same family as Yellowtail Jack and Hamachi. Yellowtail Jack and Hamachi is the same fish. Super popular fish mm. in Japanese restaurants, sushi restaurants, and this is in the same family. So even though we're cooking it, not eating it raw, that's just something for you to think about next time you hear someone call Amberjack a trash fish. Ask them to eat at sushi restaurants. Have you ever had hamachi? Because I tell you what, I've had hamachi, comma, hamachi collars at many restaurants. It's one of my favorite dishes at Japanese restaurants. Yeah. And you know, this this isn't far off as far as the dining experience goes. Yeah, it's the way to go. Oh well, man, let's dive into those cheeks. Look how just like fluffy these are. So soft and you just see how- Fork tender. Fork tender, just comes right apart. That's like so butter. Good. So good. Wow. So you can really taste the flavor of the fish right there in the cheeks. That's why I say when you're butter poaching, just season afterwards. Just go ahead and get that in there, get that cooked, and then season right afterwards. Wow, that's that low and slow. Hey man, yeah. dude, you crushed it. That was a perfect poach. Again, you can see that white juicy, no translucence. It is perfection. All right, I'm not gonna ask you to rate these yet, because we're gonna go on to your favorite part. You grab your fork, slide this on out of here. And we're gonna pull over what Omar was calling earlier, dessert. This is amberjack belly off the top of the low loin, and this is loaded with fat, absolutely delicious cut. This fish is from Captain Clay and Son Seafood Market, and this is actually Captain Clay's favorite part of the amberjack, and it's one of his favorite cuts of fish, period. Let's dig in. Let's get right into it. So, this is the top of the belly. The pin bone line was right here. This piece right there, and this piece right here are those bites separately. See, Omar's got that right there, so I'm gonna join him. Cheers. Cheers. This is gonna be killer. Mm. Boom. That's what I'm saying. That right there. The crunch mm. from that sear and that fat just created right, right there in that layer, especially on the top part. Boom. Wow. I just, I can't help but to just giggle a little bit on the inside whenever I hear someone call Amberjack a trash fish. There, there's very little fish that I've eaten that can compare to how good this is. It's a really good white fish. And white fish is literally like the last thing most people would call Amberjack. Yeah. Zero fishiness. You guys, like not even a drop of fishy flavor. Zero. And you saw the bottom of that fish. There was a little bit of that beautiful red blood and there's no fishiness. All right. Let's go to the top, which is gonna be a little different. See again, we've got that white, juicy, no opaqueness. Omar crushed it with a perfect cook. Cheers. Cheers. This is gonna eat different than the part we just tried. Wow. Mm. Mm. It's almost steaky, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. It's still the same belly, two different parts, different mm. textures, different flavor profiles. Even. It's like on a, a ribeye. Mm -hmm. You got the cap where all the fat's at. Mm -hmm. Then right there is gonna be a bit leaner. Yeah. And this doesn't have an eye like a ribeye does, but it's a, you know, good analogy. Yeah. Let's bring this piece of work over. We've got four different parts of the fish. I personally love 
each one. I do have a favorite in the mix, but let's hear it. Omar, after trying all of these, nothing but salt and pepper, you got to experience the fish as it is with nothing hiding it at all. What part was your favorite? My favorite, I got to go with the belly. All day on the belly on this amberjack, just because you can almost get the true flavor of the fish itself just on the top part and on the bottom where it tapers off. That fatty richness, that's what I go for. Granted, these cuts were amazing. The cheeks, amazing, soft, buttery, tender, melts in your mouth. But if I had to choose, definitely the belly. All right, number one is belly. Number two. Number two, cheeks. Cheeks, all day. really? Yeah. Wow, I would not have guessed that at all. We poached it. Mm -hmm. And the cheeks, I find, is like the delicacy of any species of fish, especially with this amberjack. And it's, it's something that's just, the texture is none like anything else on the plates here. All right, number three. Number three, medallions. Medallions. Whew. Man, you're throwing me through a loop with all of these answers, and that's, that's why it's so fun dining with friends that mm -hmm. love and appreciate food. You get to have these conversations, and you know, there are no wrong answers. Yeah. Like, like food is a subjective thing. It is. What it is about this is the skin on there and that skin just gives it that, that richness that it needs on this cut. And it makes a perfect sear too. It's dude, steaky. Dude, you're right, man. I've, I've never done that with the skin, and I don't think I'm ever gonna do it without the skin. Yeah, now. I don't like think there's any other totally, way. totally, totally took it to the next level having that texture change up. And I thought I was gonna like Chewy, it's not the mm -hmm. part you would want. Whereas like for an undercooked preparation, you would want the eye. Mm -hmm. And you don't want this part for an undercooked preparation, but right. fully cooked, like perfectly fully cooked, that was the best part of the medallion. I agree with you on that one. Yeah, yeah. that was wild. All right, so collars. My favorite part of the entire fish, why did it lose? Well, I would say for me, it was more so the mix between the rich, oily fattiness of the medallion of the belly, and also just the, the soft, tender, buttery cheeks. That's what did it for me. Um, I think what it was too is we were able to get a nice, good sear and a better sear on these than the collars. Granted, the collars are still such a great part of the fish. And, but if I had to put anything, first, second, and third, it would be those three. All right, you guys, if you watch the channel, you probably know what I'm gonna say for first to last, though, it is kind of splitting hairs. Omar cooked all this perfectly, and I would you know, probably give a limb for any of these cuts of fish cooked the way he cooked it. So I'm gonna go number one, collars. I love the texture of the collars. It is, it's unique, it's flavorful. It almost has like a mild shellfish flavor to it. It is just not like anything you really get out of any other fish, and I love that. Number two, is gonna be the belly. That rich butteriness of the belly is you know, one of my favorite parts of the animal. Number three, it's gonna be that corner bite. You know, if, if I had to say the whole thing, it might not get number three, but that yeah. corner bite, where the sinew was, believe it or not, with that crispy skin, I mean, that alone might have been like the best standalone bite, but as a whole, with the eye, with everything, it's gonna get a number three slot. And then cheeks, look you guys, if you watch my channel, you know I'm not one of those cheeks are the best part of the fish in the whole world, but I still enjoy them, I still love them, and I would eat this any day of the week. All right, you guys can find the link for his channel in the description. Really appreciate you guys watching. Check out what Omar's up to. This man is crushing it in the kitchen. You don't want to miss a thing.